some of my favorite talks at conferences is where we get a real glimpse in the kitchen, real use cases, real life experiences. So I'm really happy to announce our next two speakers. I have to read this out. I'm really <laughs> apologizing for that. It was really late last night. Um, we've got a wonderful use case, Nathan and Devon. Uh, we'll take you along a journey on how Café Rouge and Bella Italia are using groundbreaking conversational AI to increase customer experience and revenue in the challenging world of hospitality. The floor is yours. Are we streaming? Are we still good with the streaming schedule? Yeah, sounds good. Perfect. <laughs> um, over there, but you can also take this. Yeah, just give them. I'll just stand there. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Nathan. I'm uh, head of deployments at Poly AI. Uh, this is this is Devon. Hello. I'm uh, head of IT at the Big Table Group. Some recognisable brands there, as you heard: Cafe Rouge, Bello Italia, um, Las Iguanas. Um, and we're going to be talking about how we've worked together to deploy. I think one of the coolest sounding virtual assistants um, at the moment in the UK and how that's um, had a tangible revenue impact as well for, for these brands. Um, but I wanted to start with uh, some numbers that hopefully everyone's very familiar with, and that's that well, voice still matters. Um, given the opportunity, only 9% of people still self-serve when they want to contact customer service. 71% of people will still pick up the phone. They want a personal service. They want um, a good experience. They don't want to have to hunt around a website for an answer um, or use. And, or tired booking widget on a website either. And so in, in the real world, what that means is it means that 50% of calls were being missed by um, big table group restaurants before Poly AI. That's because staff were too busy dealing with the people in front of them. It was because um, people were just impatient. And in them, 50% of calls are revenue, uh, calls that would have brought revenue to these brands. So um, before kind of going any further, I wanted to just play you what we, what we did together, um, what we came up with to solve that problem. Cafe Rouge to Portsmouth, how can I help you today? Oh, good evening. Could I book a table for 1.30 this coming Sunday for four? Let me just have a look at what space we have. Okay. We have a table on the 30th of January at 1.30pm for four people. Is that all okay for you? That would be excellent. Great. And did you want to book for the a la carte menu? Uh, yes, we will. Okay. Shall I go ahead and book that in for you? Please do. Great. Can I have your full name, please? My full name is... Can we reach you on this number? Yes. Perfect. I'm just waiting to see that go through. And that's done. Is there anything else that you need to let me know? Any allergies or other notes that I should make on your booking? No, that's fine. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, um, yeah, that guy never knew that he wasn't talking to a, to a real person. He had the same experience or a better experience than he would have had um, otherwise. And the people in the restaurant never, never needed to lift a finger. Right, so just a bit about the Big Table Group. <coughs> Apologies. <coughs> we operate across 150 plus sites across the UK, Jersey, Guernsey. Our primary brands are Bella Italia, Cafe Rouge, Las Iguanas, Amalfi, and if any of you do follow Propel newsletters, Banana Tree is a recent acquisition of ours. We've been running, our EPOS provider is Zonal. We've been running it for the last two, three years. Arguably, it's been doing all the right things for us. Our booking reservation platform has been doing all the right things for us from a web-based point of view, but we did identify a gap and that was the telephone side of it. It was customers calling in, customers wanting to actually talk to a person, although we've kind of circumvented that anyway. But it was people just wanting to go back to that kind of traditional style of conversation and booking.
and for, uh, for us, for Poly AI, um, we're, I think these, we're a voice AI company that, that focuses on these, these three things. So um, we do everything voice first. So we build customer-led voice assistants. Um, we know that building for chat is not the same as building for voice. It has completely different considerations and also it's a lot harder. Um, so that's the challenge that we, we took up a few years ago when we, when we started. Um, a lot of our learnings um, about what makes a good voice assistant come from the real world. So um, in hospitality, it's just a great way to get in front of normal people from all demographics um, in the US and the UK and Europe um, and really understand how people talk, how people engage with voice assistants. Um, and we have a foundation of best-in-class technology. We were originally a, a Cambridge spin-out, three PhDs um, under a inner group that became the company that made Siri, Siri today. Um, they've still got, a, still got an, uh, uh, an unmarked Apple office in Cambridge. Um, so, yeah, we've got the three things, I think, that really, really come together to make the experiences really effective. And we, yeah, we were here to, to solve a, a problem. Right, so as Nathan had mentioned, you know, something which became very clear to us, where we were missing about 50% of phone calls coming through to our site. We looked at the call log data. This is prior to obviously going with, with Poly, AI as, Poly AI as a provider. And we just picked up that calls, calls were just being dropped. Now, that can be a, a host of reasons, right? That can be labor issues, which we know have come about post-Brexit. We know post-COVID, the landscape for hospitality has changed. It's just harder to hire people. And that was just going to make this worse for us. That was just going to mean more calls being dropped on a daily basis and that potential loss in revenue as a result of customers not being able to book, that brand damage that you can get from customers just getting frustrated by not being able to get through to a site. You know, all, all of these challenges for us were just things that we, we had to solve, really, and try to change the operational layout of our restaurants, trying to throw more people at the problem wasn't gonna fix the underlying issue here that, one, we actually wanted our, our staff to focus on customers already in the, in the restaurant, rather than those trying to call in. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, I, I don't know how many people from hospitality are here. It is tough out there. It's, rarely, it's just really hard to hire people, and it's really hard to train those people up so that you're getting the same conversation each time with customers. And a lot of this came from, from COVID as well, right, which caused like, the, like a significant yeah, hiring strain. Um, so yeah, uh, when, when the Big Table Group came to us, we, we thought we were best fit to solve the problem because of um, this Venn diagram. It's very similar to a Venn diagram that, that, that we, we saw a moment ago. And that it's, it's to make a good conversational assistant, it's about um, not just having uh, a few different groups of people who are experts in different things. Um, it's about joining together what we think are, are four things. So great user experience, really focused on the end caller. Um, that technological foundation and people who understand tech, having a dialogue design team who also do the, do the NLU work in Poly AI is um, really important. Um, we have a ton of functionality. We have um, a strong engineering team that can kind of integrate into every backend system that, that you can think of. And also we really focus on brand persona as well. So uh, we, wanna, we know that we are the first person that a customer is gonna interact with when it comes to contacting a brand. And that's really important, and representing that brand is something that we spend a lot of time focusing on. Um, a bit like this voice assistant sounds a lot like the type of guy who would work in, a, in, a, uh, in one, of these, one of these restaurants. Um, so we're going to go through, um, over the next 10 minutes, uh, three quick principles of how we build these trust-led, these customer-led conversations. Um, starting calls with how can I help being really open and getting data as soon as we can. Um, allowing for non-linear conversations so customers can kind of bounce around topics and also that back to that voice quality as well. Um, and we're going to do that with some hopefully fun recordings of some customers interacting with these uh, Cafe Rouges and Bellitalia systems. Um, so starting calls with how can I help? I know it's sometimes a bit controversial in these, these type of um, settings because we're often told um, we should be declaring that we're a virtual assistant and we should be telling customers what we do. But we find that actually that doesn't really work all the time. Customers just don't trust these systems and we need to get their buy-in very, very quickly. Um, get their trust early and maintain it later in the conversation. And also, um, 
asking how can I help means that we very quickly build a picture of what customers are really calling about as they tend to explain their problem um, quite, quite clearly. Um, so here's an example of somebody who is just giving us a ton of information and us, and us dealing with it. This call may be recorded for training purposes, and if you make a booking, we may use your number to send you a confirmation. Hi, thanks for calling Cafe Rouge Birmingham Bullring. How can I help you today? Oh, I've booked the table on Sunday for tomorrow, the Wednesday, at 2.30. I just need to add one more to my booking, which is five people. I want to make that six people, please. Sure. Just to check, this is about a booking you've already got with us? Yeah. One moment while I look that up. Let me just have a look at what space we have. Okay. We have a table tomorrow at 2.30pm for six people. Shall I go ahead and book that in for you? Yes, please. One moment. I'll check that went through. And that's done. Is there anything else I can help you with? That's it. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. So again, like a really crisp, short customer experience there. Um, if we had kind of declared that we were a bot, we probably would have gone through a step-by-step -step process. It would have been twice as long. Um, you would have paid twice as much for the call. Like it's a, uh, yeah, it's just a really good experience. I think. You know, I think what's uh, what's interesting there is, I've I've actually heard that call, and I still don't really understand it. And I could see as he was speaking, a lot of kind of blank faces going, I, I don't know what he wants. And yet, you know, obviously the voice assistant was able to kind of work it out, which is really impressive for us. Right, so I did, I did kind of touch on, on some of the challenges that the hospitality industry kind of faces. Um, you know, labor is obviously the biggest one for us, but something which has come in, into effect more recently, I think it was April last year, was, was allergens and having to be upfront and honest with customers and having to try get that information out of them. You know, yes, on our, on our EPOS on actual sites, we've got little prompts and little pop-ups for our waiters to kind of attend to, but they largely treat it like cookie acceptance that just kind of bypassed. And so what was really key for us was trying to be upfront and honest on the telephone side of things, trying to make sure that the customer knew that their allergens were going to be acknowledged, valued, treated and sent through our site. And what Poly AI were able to do was not only integrate with our booking reservation platform, which is the primary reason we, we went for them, but they were able to take all this additional information, put it all onto the booking notes, so that the team members were aware straight away as the customer came in that that person had a peanut allergy, for instance. You know, uh, it does kind of say that the staff can often forget to ask things, the voice assistant doesn't, right? It doesn't make mistakes, it's scripted. It will not forget, and that's really powerful for us. And that's done. Is there anything else that you need to let me know? Any allergies or other notes uh, that I should make on your booking? My, my, my daughter is, uh, has a nut allergy. We cater the dietary requirements, but all our food is prepared in the same kitchen. I'm just making a note on your booking now, but please remind someone from our team when you get here. Okay. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's all, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. That's and of course the customer can say that at any point in the conversation as well and we're able to you know, backtrack and add that, to make a modification to the booking to make sure it's there. Um, also for less important things, like for a hotel reservation, we will always say the cancellation policy and they will know that uh, a customer has been told they're gonna be charged 100 pounds if they cancel um, and they can never argue again. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, voice quality, um, this is something we, you know, we invest a lot in. We've got our um, lead dialogue designers here today. Come and speak to him at the stand over the next couple of days as well. Um, we put a lot of effort into this. Um, if you listen to some of our earlier agents, they sound like a voice assistant. The ones now sound very different. Um, and I think this, it's cool, but also it just is fun for the customer as well. Like they have a better experience, a more human experience, a more personal experience. Um, and there's a few reactions to this that we've got to play um, as well. Perfect. I'm just waiting to see that go through. And that's 
done. Is there anything else that you need to let me know? Any allergies yeah. or other notes no, that no, I should no, make no. on your booking? No, that's absolutely fine. I'm so sorry. I, I was I just said something really rude a few moments ago. I wasn't sure if you were a, a robot or an actual person. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so have you ever had someone apologise to your virtual assistant before? Um, <laughs> some people obviously are as well very excited by it. I'm afraid our team doesn't have any other availabilities either, since we're fully booked all day. Would you like oh, me to check yeah. another date for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Wait, if this is being recorded, I just want to say this is the most impressive um, robot <laughs> caller I've ever met, so top to you guys. I'm a digital host who can help you with your bookings and ask <laughs> questions. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, goodbye. Yeah, I mean, so that customer's been turned away. They've been told there's no space, but now they're still going to remember that brand and they're going to go away and tell their friends about it and they're, they're going to call again another time. So, um, yeah, yeah, I uh, love hearing calls like this. Um, so just aware of time, I'll just kind of run through this quite quickly. You know, and again, I feel like I'm doing the sales pitch for Poly AI. <laughs> from, uh, you know, from, from the actual pilot phase, from going through those commercials all the way through to then piloting, tweaking changes, I think it genuinely took about eight weeks. You know, the biggest pain point for most of these integrations that we've had before has been with our EPOS, with our booking reservation platform. Poly AI had done all that work. So the only reason it actually took eight weeks was not them, it was all us. It was all us trying to figure out how we wanted to route calls. It was us trying to figure out the customer journey that we wanted, which they were able to just quickly pivot and change and get that voice actor in and, you know, get the journey corrected. Um, the trial took about eight weeks. It was quite clear in comparing to our control sites that 100% of calls are now being answered. No surprise, it's a 24-7 voice assistant. Um, of those, about 30% were still being transferred through to our site. So we have built in, Poly AI have built in that facility to say, I want to talk to a person, go away. And it just passes you through. And sadly, 50% of those are still being dropped. So again, it goes to our operational challenges that we need to fix. But... Um, yeah, you know, I think in terms of those control sites, it was, it was clear that they outperformed them. We've kind of worked out that for an extra 2.4 people per week, so that's one table, you know, two diners really, it actually pays for this entire platform, so it's a no-brainer for us. Just on the, on the data, the previous, the previous speaker, sorry, I didn't get your name, I was talking about the importance of data and actually using it, slightly different, I suppose, here, but what we have been able to identify is uh, from, from the actual calls and the flow that goes through, we're able to now see why customers are dropping out of bookings on our web widgets, et cetera. We are not clacking, we're, we're not tracking those clicks. So we're not able to see while they're dropping off because of whatever reason, because of the voice assistant, because of this kind of back and forth that it has. We're, a, we're actually using this data now to, to manage our, our capacity at site to you know, pinpoint those sites where they're, they have misconfigured tables. This is actually just exposing it and highlighting it, and the operators are unable to hide behind the lack of data anymore. Yeah. I like to think of it as someone in the restaurant, if they had a notepad, and they were writing down everything that happened in every call, and then could just recite that to you. Um, yeah, but it would be lost, <laughs> and it would cause GDPR nightmares. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. we don't want to do that. <laughs> um, cool. So I know we're out of time, so I'll whiz through this. Um, see, we... We're deployed in many places. We've got some great stats here. Um, we answer 100% of calls 24-7 for restaurants, hotels, banks, um, telecommunications companies. I don't know if anyone's a, an Audi driver who's recently broken down. You've probably spoken to us. Um, that's probably, you know, if you're an Audi driver, that's probably um, a common thing for you. 80% um, improvement on SLAs. 89% um, um, satisfaction, which is unheard of. Um, I don't know how we get that number. It's amazing. Um, we're resolving 22% of calls for a major financial service provider, um, and we see up to 4% revenue increase in hospitality as well. Um, these are the things that the Big Table Group were to us, and our, all our customers are still calling, customer-centric, caring about control and configurability, and just wanting to create a really good brand experience um, as well. Um, come and speak to us. We won't stand too for the next couple of days. Thank you. Um, I, I'm having a look at the back. Is it okay if I have two online questions, really short ones? Yeah, great. 
because um, actually your talk had a really high engagement level online, so thank you so much to the online people. Apparently you did really spark something here. Um, I've got a question from Nena, <laughs> and she wants to know, how do we, do we ensure that the end users calling are aware that they are not talking to a human? And this was actually before the example of the people getting really exhilarated by, oh, listen to this. <laughs> So I think, I mean, first things first, like we, ne we never lie to people. Like someone says it's confused, sound vulnerable, ask who we are, we say we're a virtual assistant. But the most important thing is like getting like an honest assessment of what the customer is calling about very early. And we found, we actually, we've run an A-B experiment very recently and we contain 25% less calls when we say we're a virtual assistant upfront. We're much more effective, we get a lot more data. Um, and as soon as that customer is brought in at the start, they tend to continue talking to us throughout the conversation. Like, as long as we've responded correctly to the first thing they've said, then they're going to stay engaged, and that's really important. Um, it's a lot of people talk about containment. We talk about, like, engagement um, instead. Yeah. Thank you so much. I also see a lot of compliments in the chat, so I think it's probably a good idea if you check it out yourself in the Agorify app. Another question, a really short one, but a very important one, I think, is from Chiara. And she wants to know in how many languages is this voice quality available? Because she lives in Belgium, and of course in Belgium they speak Flemish and Wallonian. Yeah, so um, we are currently deployed with a, a major logistics provider across Europe. So everywhere from uh, France, Spain, um, Sweden, Poland, um, and the voice experience is, is just as good. We see the same, the same success rates, actually a high success rate from a deployment a few weeks ago was in Portugal on that agent um, as well. These are languages which we don't all speak, but we um, work with external translators, um, voice talent, to, to make sure the experience is really good. Um, um, and awesome. Flemish? Um, not yet, but yes, we will be in every country in Europe soon um, with that deployment. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, and I think we're, we're sticking to the schedule now, right? I've